Sup YouTube, Visual Gaming Network, and welcome to episode 7 of our Mario game in Java tutorial. Last episode, we filled in our start and stop methods and actually created our game loop. And uh, now, in this episode, we're going to create a timer. So, uh, and when I say timer, I mean frames per second timer and then ticks or updates per second timer. So I'm just going to dive right into it and we're going to create some variables. So this is a new one for you guys who aren't that experienced with Java. Long. Now all variables have a certain uh, have a limit, sorry, to a certain amount of data they can hold. And uh, integers, let's say when we give them, let's say a really big number, uh, it's too much data for an integer, and they can't handle that. But longs, however, have twice the amount of data as integers, and we can store bigger variables. So long last time equals equals system dot nano time and this pretty much just gets the current time in nanoseconds now we're going to create long timer is equal to system dot current time millis or milliseconds and it's pretty much doing same as system dot nano time it's just giving us the current time in milliseconds so now we're going to create double delta equals zero now what a double is it's pretty much the same as an integer only that it can hold decimal places while integers can't. It's double delta equals zero. Now we're going to do double ns is equal to one billion, so one and nine zeros, point zero divided by sixty point zero. All right, we should make the delta zero point zero. All right, and we're going to create integers in frames equal zero int ticks. Whoops, bad spelling today. Int ticks equals zero. You can call this updates if you want. Uh, depends uh, if you call ticks updates. Doesn't matter. Right, so now in our while running loop, uh, we're going to type, we're going to create another long. Long now is equal to system dot nano time. Now, here's a little fun fact. Uh, here's a little funny trick thing we can do. Uh, just a little experiment, just for fun. So, because, as I said in a previous episode, Java scans all its code from top to bottom, although it's very, very small amount of time, it takes time for Java to get from, let's say, this line to this line. And let's see, and we're going to find out uh, exactly how long it takes to get from long last time to long now, or the line we're going to be creating. So, we'll just type system.out.println, which is the line of code you use to print out something in the console. And we're going to type now minus last time. So in the console, this will print out the, vari the value sorry, of now subtracting last time. So if we run it, this might take a while. All right. You can see it took us exactly 4,000 nanoseconds to get from last time to here. It's pretty cool. Alright, just gonna move long back into our while running loop. Yeah, and just get rid of render and tick for now, by the way. Alright, so now we're gonna do delta plus equals now minus last time divided by ns. And while we go plus equals is because if we just do plus, it doesn't work. If we just want to uh, add things right on the spot instead of let's say delta is equal is equal to frames plus ticks, we can do that. But if it's right on the spot, like here, and we don't have and we don't use equals, then we have to go plus equals. All right. So delta is now equal to now minus last time divided by ns, and we want to set last time equal to now. So now we're going to create another while loop, like our while running loop, while delta is greater or equal to 1. Uh, then we want to tick, we want to, we want to increase our ticks variable by 1, and a quick shortcut to do that is just go tick plus plus. If we want to subtract uh, 1 from tick, just go ticks minus minus, but you want to add 1, so go ticks plus plus. Then we want to go delta minus minus, which will which will decrement it by one. 
and now we actually render and now we add one to our frames so now we're going to make an if method if system dot current time milliseconds take away timer is greater than a thousand which will occur once every second uh, then we want to go timer plus equals a thousand so we're adding a thousand to our timer like remember the plus equals like we did with our delta and now we want to we want to uh, print out in the console put line, the value of frames plus then uh, we remember to use uh, what is it called quotation marks for a string then we want to type frames per second yep. and we just put an s then remember to put a space there then we plus ticks plus updates per second all right then of course we want to set frames equal to zero and ticks equal to zero so it doesn't carry on from what it was a second ago all right so now if we run it whoa okay yeah we get we're getting a lot of frames but we don't want that much frames and uh, of course in the next episode it will probably decrease by a lot so yeah we're getting around on an average of uh, 60 updates per second which is uh, good which is what we want so yeah it's pretty much gonna wrap up our episode if you enjoyed leave a like comment and subscribe uh, episode 8 will be out next week and on that episode we're going to be filling in our render method we're going to be creating buffer strategies and actually coloring the screen so yeah if you enjoyed leave a like comment and subscribe see you next time bye